For many of us, the evolution of African-American gospel music, it seems wonderfully organic and positive. The growth of the genre and the increased creativity of its artists meant that mainstream success was sure to follow. Something we still see today with the blend of Christian messages and contemporary music. However, let's put a pause on it because some church leaders, they weren't on board with this approach and its links to secular music. They felt that it somehow it diminished the spirituality and the meaning of the hymns. Gospel's relationship with secular music it ran in both directions. Many gospel singers and soloists begin their musical journey singing in the church long before transition into popular music. People like Little Richard and Aretha Franklin and Sam Cooke, which is my favorite, they all actually helped shape the sound of R&B and rock and roll. After officially launching his career in 1972, Andre Crouch would follow Dorsey as the next leading composer of gospel songs in the mid 20th century. He was inspired to make gospel music relevant and continue to blend the traditional and the secular. This sparked disapproval from church leaders. Still, his work was revered by those in the industry and he went on to win many awards across his lifetime. Groups like the Hawkins family, that's Walter and Edwin and Tremaine, and then you have the Winans family, Marvin, Ron, Carmen, Cece, and BB, and then you have the Clark sisters. God knows we love the Clark sisters. They all helped to push this new blend of traditional and secular music to the forefront of the Christian music scene, making it the most popular style of gospel music. Now listen, we can't forget about the Mass Choir era. Oh, the one that was my favorite. You had the Mississippi Mass Choir. You had the New Jersey Mass Choir. You had the DFW Mass Choir. Then there was Reverend Milton Brunson and Reverend Timothy Wright and Reverend James Moore, all to name a few. They were all influential in crafting this new dynamic sound in gospel music.